Hello, my name is um, Anastasia Yehanou and I will um, I will talk uh, about uh, misinformation detection in um, online uh, social networks. So just a very short um, bio about me. Uh, I completed my PhD in informatics at the University of Lugano in Switzerland on tracking public opinion on, um, on social media. And uh, the last two years I was uh, a postdoc at the UPV in Valencia in Spain, where I was uh, working on a project on early fake news detection in social media funded by a Swiss National, by a Swiss National Foundation. And uh, since uh, the beginning of September, I started uh, working as a postdoc at the Human Data Science Group uh, in Utrecht University in uh, Netherlands. So let's uh, yeah, get started. Uh, I will um, start with an introduction and background regarding uh, fake news detection. So, as you know, fake news is not um, a recent problem, but exists uh, since uh, a long time. So, even uh, in the 1700s, we had cases of fake news. For example, there were rumors that King George II was ill, and this was actually an attempt to destabilize the establishment. Then, in 1938, uh, we had uh, rumors um, broadcasted by a radio program that uh, there was an alien attack and uh, people actually panicked and it was even published on the newspapers the next day. However, now we have social media and we so with social media the information can travel faster and can travel in every corner of the world. and. Uh, in addition to that, we have anonymity um, of social media and uh, users take advantage of it and they post uh, false uh, information. Um, and, but why is it important to detect all this information that it's published uh, and it's fake? It's because um, fake news, they have uh, very bad uh, consequences on the society. And actually they are now viewed as one of the greatest threats to democracy, to justice, to public trust, to freedom of expression, to journalism and to economy. They have uh, huge damages on political, economic, medical and social aspects. Uh, just two examples of that. Um, I will refer to the Pizzagate incident. Um, so there was in 2016 um, there was a pizzeria um, blamed uh, uh, about child trafficking and these rumors they traveled uh, in social media uh, up to the point that uh, someone took a gun and went there and actually he shot it. Then uh, recently with coronavirus, we see the, the consequences that rumors, uh, stigma or conspiracy theories they can have. Um, actually, there is a new term used, it's called infodemics, um, to describe all this uh, false information and misinformation actually published about uh, a pandemic. So, a study, according to a study, uh, we had roughly 800 people that they died uh, from drinking highly concentrated alcohol uh, just in the hope of disinfecting uh, their bodies. Uh, while around 6,000 citizens, they were hospitalized after uh, consuming methanol and 60 of them uh, went blind. Uh, we have different types of information disorder. So according to, um, to this um, report, uh, we have misinformation, we have disinformation and malinformation. 
So um, this information actually includes unintentional mistakes. So we can see that we have, um, we can separate them according to their falseness and also to their intention uh, to harm. So for misinformation, we have unintentional mistakes. It can be inaccurate photo captions, it can be inaccurate dates. We have disinformation and this, uh, it's actually, we can also include fake news in the way that the term is used um, these days and it can include um, false information that has the intention to harm, uh, including uh, conspiracy theories uh, or rumors. Finally, we have malinformation. And here we have a deliberate publication of, of private information for uh, personal um, um, information. It can be um, some examples of it. Uh, it can be hate speech. Also here we see uh, how we can categorize um, the different types of fake news. So we have satire. Here we have um, uh, um, news that sometimes uh, that they they want to make fun of something and then. Um, people uh, actually believe it and they take it seriously. We have also propaganda, we have rumors, we have hoaxes and clickbaits. So moving to the approaches that they have been used to detect fake news. Um, the first uh, that I will talk about, they have to do with approaches that they are using uh, some textual content. So the, um, in general, uh, they, the fake news are written with in, the intention to deceive the users. And uh, a lot of times they contain a mixture of fake and real news, uh, but also they are written in a different style um, because they just try to, they try to attract the users' um, interest and to make them uh, share. To, to make users to share them. Um, one study that they have tried to analyze uh, the differences between um, uh, fake uh, and true news um, was published in Science uh, by Yosugi et al. And they analyzed rumor cascades um, on Twitter from 2006 until 2017. The study, their study actually includes the analysis of 120,000 rumors. And they have analyzed them uh, in different aspects. And some of their conclusions is that uh, false news, they are diffused faster than the truth. And also the novelty and the emotional reactions can be responsible for the differences. So here we see the, um, the analysis. What we see is that um, for all the different information about followers, followers, verified engagement and account age, the difference between, uh, there's a statistical difference between um, fake and true, false and true uh, rumors. Also, we see that they analyze the emotions so regarding the emotions, we have um, surprise and disgust. Uh, we see that the true rumors, uh, they have, uh, they trigger a lower intensity, lower score compared to the false ones. Um, on the contrary, regarding um, joy, trust and anticipation and sadness, we see that the false, uh, they um, uh, trigger lower scores compared to, to the true ones. So um, we see that emotions and emotions uh, triggered by uh, news, it can be important. So one study that they have tried to use the emotions 
in order to categorize um, a document in uh, uh, as belonging to one of the categories of satire, hoax, propaganda, clickbait, and real news, was presented by Ghanem et al. So uh, in their model, they use um, different emotional lexicons, actually five different emotional lexicons. And they extract the emotions frequencies from the uh, documents. And also they extract the word embeddings uh, using a long short term memory a network. They then concatenate these two vectors uh, to make the final prediction using a softmax. Another work uh, using uh, emotions uh, was presented by Yahanu uh, uh, et al. So it's a, a study um, from me, uh, from Paolo Ross and Fabio Cristani. So in this study, we propose a system that is called Emocred. Emocred is based on LSTM and um, we evaluated on claims that we collected from PolitiFact. So Emocred uh, has two components, has the emotional signals and the textual one, the word abandings. Um, these two uh, components are then uh, concatenated and they are passed into a sigmoid to determine if um, a claim is credible or not. For the emotional signals, um, we try three different approaches. We try emolexi, emoint, and emoreact. The emolexi is based on the frequency of the emotions, uh, of the emotional words, emotional terms. And the emoint uh, calculates the intensity of emotions using, um, again, a lexicon. And finally, we have the emoreact that it's based on a CNN network and predicts for each claim the probability to trigger uh, any of uh, the three density levels of five reactions. And this model was trained on a collection um, consisting of news from the New York uh, Times page on Facebook. Another uh, model that it was presented by Zhu and all, uh, they have analyzed um, a lot of different um, features, uh, lexicon level, syntax level, semantic level and discourse level to see uh, how they can, uh, if they are important for fake news detection. And uh, they use data from PolitiFact and BuzzFeed. So in this study, we have uh, the content quality um, that includes features like the swear words, um, assent, and these are in the informality of the text. We have also subjectivity, we have diversity, we have sentiment and quantity. And some of these features, they are actually built using Luke. Uh, they're calculated using uh, Luke. Uh, others uh, using uh, part of speed staggers or an LTK for uh, the average sentiment score of words. Uh, in addition to that, they calculate uh, scores for cognitive processes like uh, causation and certainty and perceptual processes, again uh, using you. Uh, apart from the content, it's also important some, to see if we can collect some evidence uh, in order to see if a claim is credible or not. To this direction, Popa et al. they proposed a system called Declare, and they assess the credibility of uh, of claims on a collection um, of Snopes, of Politifact, of News Trust, and also Rumor Eval. So what they do is that they take each claim and they pass it as a query to the Bing search engine, and then they retrieve the top 30 search results 
uh, with the respective web, web sources. And here we see the architecture of this system. So we have the claim word embeddings. And also we have the article word embeddings. Uh, the article word embeddings, they are the embeddings using um, the articles retrieved with a search engine. And they are uh, uh, then concatenated together with embeddings uh, regarding the claim source and article source. So this, they represent the credibility of the source. They are concatenated all together into uh, uh, a vector and they are passed into a softmax to calculate the credibility, the final credibility score. So um, the news, they have the, the, the textual content, but sometimes they also come together with images. And so it's important to see if we can uh, use some information from the images uh, to see if we can uh, um, gain a better performance, if the systems can actually gain a better performance. So um, the idea is that information that comes from uh, images can complement the one that came from the text. So one of the systems was proposed by Wong uh, et al. And they are um, they're proposing AN, a system uh, that consists by, from three components, the multimodal, the fake news detector, and event discriminator. So for the um, first, the textual component, they use word embeddings um, based on the article terms, and uh, they use a convolution learn network. Then we have the visual, the visual, for the visual ones, they use the VGG tool uh, 19, but it's already pre-trained. And they concatenate this uh, information, these vectors, into the multimodal feature. Then um, this uh, is then passed to the fake news detector in order to um, determine if um, some news is fake or not, and also to the event discriminator that extracts the events. Another system, uh, another multimodal system was uh, by me, um, by Gubiao Zhang and Paolo Rosso. In this system, uh, we propose to combine textual, visual, and semantic information. The idea behind this uh, is that we have images that sometimes they don't really correspond to, to uh, the content of the post. So, we built first the textual component that it's based on the sentiment extracted um, with uh, uh, some lexicons. Then we have the word embeddings and uh, that it's uh, built using the word vec. Then we have the visual component. So for this one, we use um, the local binary pattern that calculates a score for every pixel depending on the um, on the neighbor uh, uh, pixels, and also we use five different models to extract image tags. So with these five models, we extract ten image tags uh, per image, and then we um, calculate the average. Um, uh, we calculate the, the embeddings um, of those tags, actually the average of those uh, 10 tags. And in the end, we compare, we calculate the cosine similarity between uh, the embeddings of every, um, uh, the embeddings um, of, the, of each model and the embeddings of the text. So in the end, we have five, a five-dimensional vector that represents the text image similarity. 
and these are concatenated together. Mm, for the experiments, we use the Media Eval uh, collection, that it's one of the benchmark collections for multimodal fake news detection. And also we use tweets that we collected, uh, collected with regards to the posts published on PolitiFact uh, or on GossipCop. Um, apart from um, the visual uh, information, what um, also it can be important is instead of using only information extracted from one image, extract also information from multiple images because articles, they usually come together with more than uh, one image. So in this model, we um, propose um, an architecture uh, based on three different components. So we have the textual one. The textual one is based on uh, the pre-trained bird base. We have also the visual one that it's based on uh, tags extracted with uh, VGG16. And also we calculate the similarity between the um, embeddings of the title and the embeddings of the tags. And since we have three images, we take three images per article. We have uh, a three uh, dimensional vector for the similarity. Um, the final part uh, of the approaches on fake news has to do with uh, uh, the role of users. So the role of users, uh, it's important for fake news detection since they play a critical role in all the different phases of fake news cycle, from the creation to the propagation. Um, one of the studies uh, that focused on understanding user profiles on social media was presented by Shu et al. And they have analyzed uh, users that they were spreading fake news and users that they were spreading real news. And they found that users that shared real news, they tend to have longer registered time compared to those sharing fake news. Uh, also, they found that users that shared fake news, they had higher extraversion and agreeableness in terms of personality. Um, another work uh, focused on uh, users, it's the role of personality and linguistic patterns in discriminating between fake news spreaders and fact checkers. So here, this study focused um, on understanding if a user is going to spread fake news or is going to spread to say that, to, to fact check uh, actually a tweet. So here we see an example. Uh, we have an original post that says that Ivanka Trump is not being fired from the White House. Then we pre-process this post. So we remove the word not, we remove the, the stop words, and we retrieve tweets. We have the fact check tweets that says Ivanka Trump, uh, it's not fired, or we have spreading tweets that says that actually support uh, that Ivanka Trump was fired. And we um, propose a model that is uh, called checker spreader. The model is based on a convolutional neural network and consists of two different components. We have the textual that refers to the word embeddings and we have the psycholinguistic component. The psycholinguistic component uh, is based on linguistic patterns and also personality scores. And for the linguistic patterns, we use uh, look. And for personality scores, we calculate um, scores uh, with regards to the five factor model. So, openness to experience, consciousness, agreeableness, extraversion, and neurotism. 
regarding the profiling of users for, for fake news detection, we should also note that um, these tools, they had to be aware of all the ethical concerns. So they shouldn't, uh, by any way, use to stigmatize the users, uh, since there are users that they unintentionally spread fake news. Uh, however, they should uh, emphasize and they should be used only for the benefit of the users and nothing else. For example, as supportive tools to prevent propagation or to raise awareness to users, especially those sharing unintentionally the fake news. And so also when a dataset is released, um, it should make clear uh, that it's available for research purposes and should take all the um, uh, um, should release the data, for example, anonymized to, to protect uh, users' data. And um, regarding the evaluation of fake news detection, so there are a lot of uh, tasks, proposed um, evaluation tasks. One of these, uh, it's the profiling fake news spreaders on Twitter organized with this year's PAN. At CLEP. So the aim of this task is to uh, see if it's possible to identify, to detect potential fake news spreaders. The uh, data, they were available in English and Spanish and 60 teams participated in this share task. Uh, the best result they were obtained by Pizzero and Buddha and um, Bolognese, so two different approaches. Um, the one from Pizzero uh, was based on combinations of character and word and crumbs with support vector machines, while the approach from Buddha and uh, Bolognese was based on a logistic regression ensemble of five sub-models. So they had then grams with logistic regression, with SVM, random forest, XGBoost, uh, and also some um, features based on textual descriptive statistics. Another uh, evaluation uh, task was the check that, for example, in 2019, the aim was to predict the factuality of Arabic claims. And in this task, uh, the best system was presented by Ghanem et al. And it was a cross-lingual approach. Um, they trained the textual entailment system on English. And then um, we projected Arabic embeddings on English space to make the final prediction. So to summarize um, the work and to also to discuss some open challenges uh, regarding fake news detection. So one of the tasks that needs further investigation is the intention detection. For example, making more fine-grained classification. By intention, of course, there is a, a big challenge of how you can build a collection uh, regarding the intention. One example is classification of fake and satire news um, or fake and hi hyper-partisan news. Also uh, cross-domain, cross-topic and cross-language detection um, uh, can uh, is an open area of research. Uh, for example, uh, how similar is the writing style between satire, between rumors, and between clickbaits, um, or develop techniques for cross-domain or cross-language fake news detection. So to summarize, uh, fake news, it's a great threat for the society. Uh, it's doing a great damage um on the society so we need tools that they can detect them it's very challenging to develop efficient uh systems because also we have um, um sophisticated tools that they generate uh fake news 
the content is one of the most important information that uh, the systems use. Uh, either uh, trying to find some patterns from the text or also using evidence uh, collected from internet. Multimodal detection also uh, is important and multimodal uh, information can, can complement um, a system uh, in the 14 uh, with the aim to improve the performance. And finally, uh, we saw that uh, it's also possible to profile users that they tend to share fake news. However, uh, we should be very careful of how we release data and we should be uh, very careful about all the ethical concerns um, related to profiling users. And uh, yeah, so with this slide, um, I'm going to finish my presentation and uh, if you have any question, I'm happy to, uh, to reply.